today we're talking all about Oven 101. All the things you need to know to improve your baking and ensure the best results every single time you're in the kitchen. My name is Tessa and I'm from HandleTheHeat.com where I love to share homemade baking recipes and kitchen tips to help you be successful in the kitchen. And today I'm talking about something that might not seem that important, but it truly is something you need to understand so that you can improve your baking for the rest of your life. Be sure to watch this video all the way to the end because I'm going to be covering oven temperature and how to accurately gauge it, the positioning of your oven racks and the surprising effect it can have on your baking. And lastly, I'm actually going to be talking about conventional oven baking versus convectional oven baking, what the differences are and showing you side-by-side -side comparisons of cookies baked in convection versus conventional. So if you'd love to learn all about this scientific approach to baking, then just keep watching. All right, so first things first, before you bake anything ever again, you need to get your hands on an oven thermometer. If you're not already using one, this will seriously, significantly improve your baking. You would be shocked to find out just how many ovens are completely inaccurate when they tell you what they're heated to. For instance, just today when I was baking up all these different cookies to show you the differences in how you use your oven, how it will impact your final result, what I found was that when my oven told me it was preheated to 350 degrees, my oven thermometer actually said it was only 300 degrees. Now, if I had baked my cookies right then and there after the oven beeped telling me it was ready, my cookies would not have been that good. Thank God I didn't do that because I would have wasted tons of time, expensive ingredients, and would have been totally frustrated and confused as to why my cookies didn't turn out. Most home ovens can be off by up to 25 degrees on average, even after they've been preheating, preheating for quite a while. So an oven thermometer will help you know if your oven is too hot or too cold and you can adjust the temperature based off of what the difference is. So for the purposes of this video to truly illustrate exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to be using my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe to show you exactly how the situation of your oven can impact the final result. But just know that this applies to pretty much anything you're baking. So this is what your cookies will look like if they're baked at the correct temperature of 350 degrees. This is what they'll look like if they're baked at 25 degrees too cold. And this is what they'll look like if they're baked at 25 degrees too hot. So here are the differences side by side. Pretty different results and you might never know why your baked goods don't look exactly like the photo until you start using an oven thermometer now. So something else that has a total surprising impact on the final result of your baked goods is actually the placement of your oven rack in the oven. And I have some more pictures to show you side by side to really illustrate this point. So if you bake your cookies or anything else on the top rack, there won't be nearly as much browning as you can see here. Look at the bottoms, it's not nearly as brown as if we were to bake on the bottom rack which is quite a bit darker in comparison, there will likely be too much browning if you bake on the bottom rack. Similar results can occur when you bake too many things at once in the same oven. If you're baking like three trays of cookies in the same oven or you're baking a casserole and you're baking cookies at the same time, the heat, the distribution of the heat will be interrupted and disturbed by the different baking dishes in the oven. So ideally, if you can bake one tray of cookies at a time, you'll get the best results. So the last thing I wanted to cover in this Oven 101 video is the differences between baking with a convention oven and baking with a convection oven. And this was actually requested to me by one of my lovely customers who purchased my ultimate cookie handbook. I'll go ahead and link to that ebook in the description box below, but he really wanted to know what the differences are, especially when you're baking cookies, when you're using a convention oven or a convection oven. So let me quickly explain how these two different ovens work. So unlike a convention oven, which are standard here in the US, 
A convection oven has a fan inside and an exhaust system that helps to circulate the hot air. This allows the oven to heat more quickly and evenly and efficiently and will actually bake your goods faster. Since the hot air is being blown around, it will actually develop browning more quickly and easily. And that's actually because the blowing air creates a drier environment. Actually, it bakes so much more evenly that you don't even need to rotate your baking trays. And actually, the reason I haven't really talked much about this until just now is that I only ever had convention ovens. Until we moved into this house last year, the oven in this house can do both convention and convection. It's pretty cool. Convection is great for savory preparations like roasts, or casseroles or braises, especially anything that needs to be covered. And it's also good for cookies or pies or pastries. The convection setting is not good for more delicate foods like cakes or custards or souffles or quick breads. What's important to note is that if you're using the convection setting, you need to make some adjustments to get the best result possible. So I'm gonna show you a cookie that was baked at 350 degrees Fahrenheit in a regular convention oven. This is my ultimate chocolate chip cookie recipe. I'll link to this in the description box below. This is the same exact dough baked at the same temperature for the same amount of time, but with the convection setting on. As you can see, the cookie baked with a convection setting on with no further adjustments made is quite a bit more cooked and brown, possibly a slightly overcooked and slightly overbrown, depending on your preferences. This is why it's really important to actually reduce the oven temperature by 25 degrees if you're using the convection setting. You will also want to start checking for doneness earlier than the recipe recommends. So I bake the first batch for 13 minutes the convection batch that looked a little overcooked, I also baked at 350 for 13 minutes. The final batch, which had the correct adjustments for using a convection oven, was actually baked at 325 degrees with the fan on for 11 minutes. So it was actually a couple minutes less to get the perfect result. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about the importance of understanding how your oven works. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, let me know what you'd like to see next time in the comments below, and I'll try to reply back and make it happen for you. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you around soon.